Again, welcome to Java Programming 1. In this lecture, we're going to continue with our Java Programming uh, array concept. Uh, in the previous lectures, we discussed about what is an array, the purpose of using an array in any programming language. In this session, we're going to discuss about a few examples uh, about array, how we can process array. So our first objective, the objective is to initialize array with an input values. Also, we can initialize array with random values, printing items in an array, how we can sum all element in an array, finding the largest element in an array, finding the smallest index of the largest element, random shuffling, and also shifting the elements in an array. So again, we already know what is an array, and this session again is again having some few examples on how to process items in an array. So first we start with the initializing array with an input value. Most of the time, since array consists of an items, it can be two or more items. For example, if I'm going to use two values in my program, most likely I'm not going to use an array. I will just declare two variables. But if I'm going to use 200, or thousand elements in my program. I don't think I'm going to declare 100 or 200, even 50 variables too much. So in this concept, I'm going to use an array whereby I will declare only one array and then I may assign any amount of element values to the array. So in this section, we are go we are assuming that we already have an array. The array name is my list. Again, in the previous lectures, we discussed on the syntax in Java, how to again declare and also initialize an items in an array. So here we have an array name, my list already. Let's assume it's already declared. So if I want to initialize an item with input values, loop is the best way. Since I have a lot of items and I'm going to input some items uh, values into an array, I'm going to do the same tax more than once. So the best way is to use a loop. The same thing if I want to print an items in an array, I'm going to print items from one to 100. It's better I use a loop, then write only one statement inside the loop to print all the items from one to 100 or any amount. Again, since we already discussed that the index always start from zero, so it's better we start the count of the variable from zero. So if it's 10 element, then the index will be zero to nine. So here we have our scanner object. Our scanner object name is input. So the first thing we ask the user system.out, enter the number of elements. So my list.length, we discussed earlier that the length will give us the size of the array. So if my list array, the size is 10, my list dot length will be 10. So here we are saying enter whatever amount of the values are the array size. Let's assume the array size is 10, so enter 10 values. Now we start with the for loop. The index of an array start from zero. So we start from zero and we have to go less than the size, because if the size of array is 10, then our index will be zero to nine. So that's why the counter condition is i is less than the size of the array. Then we increment once. So from zero, one, two, three, up to nine. Then here we're asking the user to enter the input. So we use the scanner object input dot nest double. The reason why we're using nest double method again, because the data types or the values inside the array, the data type is double, so we use next double. If the data type is int, then we may use next int. Again, in this section, we are assuming that the array name my list is already declared. We, we don't have it here. The only thing we, we learning is how to initialize arrays with an input value. Means I will enter the value. The user will enter the value. So if user is going to enter value, then we need a scanner object. We create our scanner object name input. 
So we use input dot next double. We go through the array, the index from zero to, if it's 10, the zero to nine. So my list dot let give us the size of the array. So this is another common way of initializing an array with users input values. So the instruction, again, system.r.print here, just to give us the instruction. The whole code is the last two lines. We start the index from zero to less than the length. We increment by one. Then we use our scanner object input dot next double. Then we put the value inside the array. The array name is my list. So the first i will be zero. So if i is zero, then that will be the first value we enter. We increment i to one, then i will be one here, the second value, all the way until the condition of the loop is false. So if it's 10, we go from zero to nine. So let's see the next example. How can we initialize the array with a random values? Here we use the random method. We discuss about this. This is a static method. We have the mat.random, mat.random. Quite remember somewhere earlier in the chapter where we discuss it, but uh, um, classes that is already built in in Java for us. One of them, actually mat class is one of the famous class because with this class, I can do a lot of, we can do a lot of mathematical operation. For example, finding the square root, trigonometry functions, uh, powers, exponential, everything is in the math class. So here we are using the random method inside the math class. So this means my size of the array again is as the previous, my list dot length. So it depends whatever my list size is. So we go zero, if it's 10 again, we go from zero to nine. Then each run from first value, we randomly pick values. And remember we multiply here by 100, so we start from 100. Let's try the next one, it's printing arrays. Now if I want to print the values in an array, best way use the for loop. So you can see that all the examples we have so far, we are using loop, why? because in an array, we have a lot of values and we are doing the same operation for each one. So if I want to print all the elements in an array, I can use the index start from zero to the less than the size again, then system.r.print my list i. So if i is zero, that would be the first element to print, one second element up to the end. Let's try another example, summing all elements in an array. Uh, so here again, we know array consists of a number of values. So I start with the loop again from zero index to less than the size. So again, if the size is 10 values, then I'll go from zero, the index will go from zero to nine. Then each run, I'm going to add the value to the previous total. So here we, init we declare variable name total, we initialize it to zero, make sure there's nothing inside. Then the first value, we say total plus equal my list, which means total equal to total plus my list array. So the first value is zero. We had a zero and uh, the zero index, whatever the value is, we had a value to total, which is zero. So the first value of the total is zero. We declare our variable total initialized to zero. So we had zero to our first value. We increment the counter to one. We had a second value, two, we had a third. So we are going to add all the values until our loop condition here become false, then the loop will stop or terminate. So here we're going to have total equal to total plus my list in the array. Let's see one more example. Finding the largest element. Now we know this already. We wrote this code in the earlier time when we we're doing the selection statement. We know that if I want to find the largest element in more than, let's see, three, four, any amount of values, first I will take the first value as the maximum. Then I'll compare the first, I can go to the loop and I'll compare the first value with the next value. If the first value is greater than the next value, then we still keep the first value as the maximum. But if the first value is less than the 
next value, then we change. We give the maximum to the next value. The same concept we are doing here. So you can see that here, we declare variable mass and we say what, my list zero. So the first value in the array, we assign it to the mass. So that's the maximum value. So this time, we have to start our index from one because we already have the first value as the maximum. So we start from one again, less than the my list dot length. Then we are going to compare now. My list one, the first, the next value, the second value is one, so I is one. Is it greater than the my list zero, which we assign to mass? So if this condition is true, then what we do? We give my list I, which is one now, we assign it to mass. We assign it to mass. If not, if this condition is false, then we cannot assign my list I, in this case, one to mass, we cannot. So the first value is still the mass. Then we increment to two. So my list two is greater than mass. Okay, if it's yes, then assign my list two, which is the third value as the mass now. Then we increment to four. So we have to continue until again, our loop condition become false. So if the size is 10, we go from zero to nine. When we reach nine, it's nine less than my list dot length. My list dot length is 10. So it's nine less than 10 years. So we compare again, we compare which one is mass, then we assign. Then we increment to one, 10. It's 10 less than 10, no, we stop. So whatever the last value is will be our solution. So this is again finding the largest element in an array. The algorithm is the same as if I have two or three values, I want to find the maximum. Assuming the first value should be the maximum. Then go through for loop, start with the second value to the end of the value. Every run of the loop, we compare, first we compare our first maximum with the next value. If this condition is true, then we assign the new value to the previous mass. So this will be zero, this will be one. Is my least one greater than my least zero? Because we assign my least zero to mass variable, so we are using it to check. So let's try the next example. Here is random shuffling. Uh, so here, again, trying to generate numbers, but this time it's randomly shuffling. So the same concept, we have to go through, so this is our array. Let's say the size is from zero to whatever the size is 10, and from zero to nine. So here we say, we start from zero, less than my list dot length minus one. Now, since we are doing shuffling, we want to take one out first to check. So if the item is 10, we, we're going to do only from, Nine, zero to nine. Zero to nine is the index, so 10 items. So we do going to do from zero to eight. So we don't want to go to the last value. So we said my list dot length minus one. Then now we're going to generate an index J randomly. So we use the mat.random int. Then we generate again, this will be any value. You know, randomly generate. We put that value in J. Then we say my list dot length. So here, what we say is that J equal to int, we are, and the random number that we are generating will be int. Math dot random times my list dot length. So if the size is 10, whatever number we generate uh, times, we move it 10, multiply by my list dot. So it will be math dot random times 10. Now, after we randomly generate the value, then we're going to swipe. So here we declare, in computer science, when you want to swipe two values, you're going to get a third variable, which will be like our temp, and that's what we have here. Put the first value into the temp, then put the second value into the first, then put the temp into, because for example, if I want to swipe, and I just scan as okay, I'll put this, 
I have two values uh, in two variables. If I assign the first variable to the second variable, what happened? The second variable value is gone. It's overrated. It's gone. So because of that, in computer science, we have to have our temp third variable that we're going to put first value into the term, put the second to the first, then put the term to the first. So this will mean, we, but uh, Python have a special way of doing this. We have a special method whereby we don't need a third variable to do it. There's a special operation for that. But again, C++, Java, swapping means get a third value, put the first to the third variable. Then since I put the first to the temp or the third variable, which in this case we call temp. So the first is there. I'll take the second to first. Then I'll take what is in the temp. The temp is first. So now I'll take it to the second, then swap it. So what we are doing, this code here, just to random shuffling the value. So here we randomly generate the value, but we are still generating so the random value that is generated is the J. Then later we swap it with the I position. The I is the counter, the index. So shifting elements. So we return the first element, which means my list, the first element to the temp. Then we're going to shift the element first. So look what we are doing now. We are starting from the second. I start from one. Then I less than my list dot length, then we increment. Then I'm going to take my list I assigned to what? My list I minus one. So which means I'm shifting it one back. So if this is three, I'm moving it to two. If I'm in the third and fourth value, which is in the three, it will be two because three minus one. Then we want to move the first element to fulfill in the last position. So now we take the temp and then assign to again my list dot length minus one, which is if the size is uh, 10, then 10 minus one. So we're moving the first element to fill in what the last position. Last position always, as we said, if the size of the array is 100, then this will go up to 99. So the last in this my list dot length minus one. We assign the temp to it, which was the first value. We assign the first element to temp. Now we move, so that's the diagram here. We are shifting the first value to last. And then move the last value. So another way of doing uh, operations on, uh, especially if I want to print all the elements in an array, we have a special for loop that we can use. It's called a for each. Now, let's say we have an array, the size is 20, and I want to print the first 10 values. I cannot use, I cannot use for each loop. For each loop means you're going to do the operation in all the elements in the array once. So here we say that JDK 1.5 introduced a new for loop that enable you to transverse the, comp say the keyword is transverse the complete array sequentially. So you have to start from beginning to the end without using an index variable. So for example, the following code display all elements in the array, my list. So here we don't need index, but if I said for double value color my list, and now I say system dot dot print value. Now value is my uh, variable that will go through the I get the items from my list is the array name. So in this case, there is no way that uh, if I have 10 elements, I will go through only the first five or first and nine. No, this means I have to go through element. I'm printing system dot dot print ln. I'm printing all the elements in the my list array using the variable value. So here in general, the syntax is the element type value. So the element type again is double, the data type, and the variable name is value. Then this is the array reference variable. So the array name, then do whatever process. The same thing, I can find a sum 
of all the values in an array, then I just have to write the code here. So this for each loop means I can use it in an array. If I want to do the same operation to all the elements in the, in the array at once, here example is I want to print all the values in the array. So system.r.println, again, the value variable type that printing. The array name is my list. He also will say you still have to use an index variable if you wish to transverse the array in a different order or change the elements in the array. So we have one program here to analyze numbers. Here they say read 100 numbers, compute the average, and find out how many numbers are above the average. And let's see if we can get to this program. Again, I'm going to have a hands-on project and uh, I'll go through this code. I think the font is very small. Let me see if I can zoom it. I haven't tried this before in the web browser. Uh, no, we cannot zoom it. So again, this program here, the main class is again, uh, analyze numbers, that's the name of the class, uh, main class. So the file name will be analyze numbers.java. We have the main method. Now we have our scanner object name input. Then we ask the user to enter the number of items. So we use the, and the data type is int, the values is going to enter. So we say input.nest int to n. Then we declare another variable double numbers. This will create an array, and the array name is called numbers. And you can see we have the square bracket open and close, so this is an array. And we declare it, then we have the sum equal to zero. Now, the operation here, we have to use a loop. So what we are doing here is that we ask the user to enter the numbers, as we did previously, initializing elements in array using an input, so it's the same code here. Here we have a for loop to enter the numbers. Now when we enter the numbers, every run we enter the number, we had it. So we enter the number, then we sum it. So that was why we declare the sum equal to zero. So we use a for index from zero to less than n. n is the size of the array, we can see. When we declare the array, we use the lowercase n here, so the size of the array. We ask the user to enter the values in a array element from zero to whatever the size is. Each run, we add it to the sum. So after that, we come out of the loop, we get the sum now, we find the average. Average will be sum over n, because n is the size of the array, the values. Now we say that, okay, if, uh, we, ha we have the average now and we have the sun and the next is we want to know if the average is greater than some of the values or less than some of the values. So here we go through the element in the array again. So we start from the index zero to less than n. Then we check from beginning. Is the first number greater than average? If it is, increment. If not, we don't need to increment. So at the end, what we're trying to do here is that we have a program that asks a user to enter some values into an array. Later, we sum all the values, then we find the average. Then we use the average to compare all the values in an array and to know how many values in an array is greater than the average. Because here, when we check the number in the array is greater than average, then we increment the counter. So at the end, we are going to print out the average and also we are going to print out how many values in the, in the array that is greater than, again, the average. And we can run this program from here. Uh, here we can see the output here. Uh, this, in this case, we supposed to ask the user to enter the values. So let's assume user enter some values here. Then the, he enter 10 values. Uh, we find the average. Then when we compare the average with the values that we enter, we find out that six of the values are greater than the average. So 
So again, this is the code. Uh, I'm, again, I'm going to do a lab work, uh, videos on a lab, so we may see this code bigger in the future uh, video. So there's another program, deck of a cards. Uh, this program is just to write a program that picks four cards randomly from a deck of 52 cards. All the cards can be represented using an, an array. The whole concept is again using an array uh, filled with initial values from zero to 51. So here you can see that we declare an array. The size is 52, Y Because the cards are 52, deck of a card. And we start the index from zero to 51. Then we can initialize the card using what for loop. So we start from zero to 51, which is 52 items. Then we assign the counting, the counter. So the first value is zero. We assign it to the first element. Then we increment to one, one to the second, two to the third, etc. So let's see this code also. Again, maybe very small, but uh hopefully we're going to have again a lab work where we can see it bigger so we have a main class name deck of cards so our program name is deck of cards java we have the main method we declare our array the size is 52 then we have the suits we declare a variable name suits data type is a string it's an array we initial, we know the suit, we have a space, hat, diamond, and clubs. So I don't want to declare an array with a size four. And here we declare an initializing. We went through this in our first array lectures, how we can again declare an array and also initialize it at the same time. We declare the second one also the ranks. The ranks will be SS, which is A. Then in a space in the cars we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Then also we have uh, the jack, queen, and king. So those are the suits and the ranks. So we initialize the cards from zero to the length of the card, so zero to fifty-one. And first we assign i to the to the deck i in the index. So if it's zero, we start from zero, one, two, that's the starting. So now we have to shuffle the card now. Remember we have the suits and the ranks, which is the space odds, uh, hats, diamond clubs. So to shuffle the cards, same thing, we start from zero to the size, 52. So we go up to 51, zero to 51. We generate an index randomly. So we use the mat.random times what? The deck dot length. We don't want to go more than the, the length of the. So the first deck high, we assign it to the temp. Then the deck index, which is the, the random value that we generated, we assign it to the deck high, then the temp to the deck index. Then we can display the first four cards. Remember, we need a suit and rank. So uh, the first four cards means we go from zero to three because the hand will be four cards. Then we have to randomly generate. Uh, we know the suit will be 13. Uh, 30, so uh, we randomly generate uh, the four loop display the four elements. Then we have the deck and then the suit that we print. Again, it's very difficult. The test here is very small, but again, we may do a lab work and, and we may write all this code again. So that's the, the code, the steps that the code will follow. So we can see that we have the deck from zero to 51, the array. Remember we said uh, space, 13, clubs, uh, hearts, diamond, they are all 13, 13, 13, eight, so total is 52. But at the same time, we have the essays, uh, I mean the two, three, four, then the king, queen, uh, jack. 
So the card number says is uh, seven, six modulus 13 equal to six of speed. Seven divided by 13 give us zero. Then we find the remainders. So returning an array from a method, here we have a, a method named reverse. And the argument is that array int, type is int, the array name is list. So we use the new keyword to declare our array name result. The size will be the list.length. And we say, okay, from zero, j is result.length minus one, and i is list.length, then increment i, then decrement. What we are doing here is reversing, uh, changing uh, the direction of the items in the array. So here we're going to return the result. And we have the list and also the result. So if the items is one, two, three, four, five, six, list one, the reverse will give us six, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, let's trace the reverse here. So uh, this is the code again. Here we declare the result array first. So this is the items. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we have the method, what well, we call the method reverse and the array list one. It will give us six, five, four, three, two, one. So the first thing we declare the array result. Then next we have our loop, for loop. And uh, we say i is zero and j is five. And next we say i is less than list dot length, which is six. Again, we are looking the highest value is six and the least size is six. Then we increment i, decrement j. Well, let's go. So next we assign the list i to result j. So which means what I'm assigning the uh, result, the list zero to result five. So reversing it because we can see I start from what zero, J start from what result minus uh, result dot length minus one. So if the size is C six, we are saying that the index we are putting zero to five, and that's what is here. So assign five and assign zero to five. And the whole goal is reversing. And we're going, we will go through this loop until our condition is false. So we're going to reverse all the values. So after this, I become one, then J is four, decrement. And we go through the steps. So two to two, then three will go next, then four will go next. And then five will go next. And then the last one is the six increment to zero. So when I is five, J will be zero. So this will be the conclusion of uh, process. And these are some few examples of us, uh, how we can process items in an array. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you.